What's up, everybody? This is Brant Phillips. I want to welcome you to Real Estate Fundamentals. So what we're talking about today is flipping mistakes to avoid. So I was going through some old videos. This is a, a webinar that I did years ago. I just finished listening to this video myself, and it's so funny. I've been in the flipping business for 12, 13 years now, but some of the mistakes I made on my very first flip are so true today. I'm still seeing investors making these mistakes all over the place. So if especially you want to watch this, if you're a new investor, you're just getting started to flipping, I promise you there's going to be some nuggets and there's going to be some big time takeaways in this video watching flipping mistakes to avoid. How do I know? Because I've made them all. So learn from my mistakes. They're not fun. When you go through them yourself, it's much more enjoyable watching someone else make them. So I hope you enjoy this video. This is a multiple, uh, multi-series video, so be sure that you watch all of them. And uh, drop some comments. Hit the like button. Hit subscribe. I'm giving you guys tons and tons of content and training and value of what I've learned over doing hundreds and hundreds of deals over the years. So I hope you enjoy it. We'll talk to you later. Okay, a few more or stragglers are coming on, so I'm going to give them just a second and get started. Well, with that, uh, we are going to go ahead and get this thing started. Well, welcome everybody to this webinar. We're going to talk about flipping mistakes to avoid. And yes, unfortunately or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, uh, these are mistakes that I have made. And I'm also going to share a few mistakes that I've seen others make and in hopes that uh, you can avoid some of these things. So let's get started with the webinar. So what are we going to learn tonight? Well, like I mentioned, we're going to learn the common mistakes to avoid when flipping houses. We're going to talk about as well how you can avoid these typical pitfalls that I've made and unfortunately that I see a lot, a lot of people make. Um, still on a daily basis um, in the course of my business and uh, most importantly we're going to talk about some actions uh, that will translate to success so you can like I mentioned avoid a lot of these pitfalls because the bottom line with flipping houses is you want to see dollar signs at the end of the day it is no fun no fun at all to flip a house and not make money so we're going to try to avoid that all right, so I know a lot of you know me, but there's uh, some people on that I've never seen before. I've never seen some names and some emails, so a lot of you people don't know me, so I'm going to go over that real quick. Uh, my name is Brant Phillips, and yes, I was a, a former police officer, and I was a corporate rat that was not fitting in too well with the corporate America schema thing. So, you know, I just decided I was going to try to invest my way out of uh, that lifestyle, if you will. And so I bought, uh, bought my first investment property. In uh, 2007, it was a rental property, and I went on to buy about nine more that year. About ten investment properties that first year, and uh, with you know no uh, knowledge or really experience before I got started, I just kind of figured it out, joined a few clubs, and read some books, and you know started just basically started doing it. And uh, so now I have about 30 some odd rental properties, and I've really found one of my uh, uh, numerous business passions is flipping houses and uh, something I do for myself and as well with a lot of partners and, and customers through rent ready contractors so um, as you may or may not know about me yeah you know, when I first started I was like uh, you know kind of I don't want to say totally rags to riches but I was living in an apartment and my wife and I had zero money to our name we had just finished off paying student loans and some credit cards and we were you know the Dave Ramsey debt free kind of thing but uh, I knew that just working a job grinding it out for the next 20 or 30 years hoping to not get laid off at my job wasn't gonna cut it for me so I kinda started looking another way at, at, and real estate was where I turned as uh, you know a lot of you guys are as well so uh, I actually used a credit card to, uh, to purchase my first investment property to use that as a down payment and soon uh, learned that the only way I was going to keep investing was to learn to get creative and kind of do some no money down deals. And so uh, just based on uh, super motivation to leave my job and kind of live a, a life, I 
seen others live and uh, knew it was possible. That's why I, uh, I jumped into the real estate investing game. And uh, hey guys, just a few things real quick. Um, I didn't mention earlier, you probably at this point in time, we're going to start getting to some of the, some of the uh, meat of the, the night. I want to make sure that you've uh, kind of got your distractions away and be ready to take some new note, uh, take some notes and get ready for some ideas that you can implement into your business as well. And, um, and also, if you have any questions, you can send those to me or you can wait until the end. I'm going to wait and hold all questions until the end and um, try to answer some of those then and as well as go over some general information and updates. So here we go. You know, whenever I was putting this presentation together, um, I was thinking about all the mistakes that I've made and that I've seen others make um, when flipping houses. And you know what? It dawned on me that I pretty much made almost every mistake in the book on the very first flip that I did. And so it made this presentation a little simpler, but I think it just uh, you know exemplified what a lot of people do in the beginning. In the beginning, we don't know. And the only way that you can learn is through – well, you can learn from others if you're smart or you're like me. You just go out there and you do it. And I saw a quote actually yesterday from Robert Kiyosaki, and it said, education is cheap, but experience is expensive. And so what I'm going to give you tonight is uh, some very expensive experience that I've had. And um, But I can tell you what, after – going through it and learning from it, I've never made these mistakes again. Well, almost never. Most of them you don't learn because you learn the hard way and it becomes real. So let's talk about uh, my first flip, and that's what a lot of tonight's uh, training is going to be on. I'm going to go over these details. So so let's talk about my first flip. I purchased my first flip. It was about 18 months after I began uh, real estate investing, after I had bought my first uh rental property is when I decided to get into the flip game. So around that time, I had about 15 or so rentals under my belt, uh, you know, full rehabs that I was uh, doing and managing um, at that time. So I had quite a bit of experience, a little bit more than, say, someone just coming out of the blocks and they're going to do their uh, flip as their first investment property, which is a little bit tricky, but I did have a little bit of experience. And so, but luckily, fortunately for me, I had some very, very intense training and background in flipping houses. And some of you may be familiar with this. It was from the school of A&E, otherwise known. Yeah, you got it. Flip this house. I was a, a flip this house junkie. I used to sit on the couch, eat my potato chips and ice cream and watch episode after episode. And, you know, my wife liked the show, but after like watching me watch it like a hundred times, I think she was like, why don't you just go do that <laughs> instead of like sitting here and watching the show. So yeah, I was addicted to flip this house. So I thought I knew it all after watching that. So here's another thing. Um, not many of you know about me um, and haven't shared this with everybody, but I lost money on my first flip. Yes, I did, and we're going to talk about that tonight and, you know, how I've also corrected course. So, you know, that is one thing that um, I'm not happy about, but looking back on it, you know what, it's been but one of the greatest experiences of, of my business life because I learned so much from it. And I can tell you, at the time, when I lost money on that flip, you know, I was still, I was still working a full-time job. My wife and I were, you know, getting – a little bit further ahead in life, but we were still, you know, uh, fairly uh, newly married. You know, we had our, our second child, a third one on the way. So when I, I did lose some money, it wasn't a substantial amount, but it was very, very painful. It was not, I was not in position uh, to where it was uh, good to lose money and you never want to lose money, but I can just say that it was a tough pill to swallow at the time. So let's talk about uh, kind of where I've, I've boiled things down in the very first mistake that I made, and I've seen others make this mistake, but it really came down to a really true failure to plan and analyze properly the deal. Okay, That was uh, where the thing kind of started, and uh, there's a saying that I've heard and I think about every now and then. It's called the rule of the six Ps, and it's prior proper planning and analysis. Uh, prevents poor performance. 
I had a poor performance on that flip and looking back at it, if I had analyzed a few things differently, planned a little bit better, uh, I could have, I'll say, easily avoided the outcome that I had on this flip. So how, how do you avoid that? Okay, so this is, uh, this is probably where you're going to want to start taking some notes right here. Um, carefully, and I say carefully, analyze the DOM, which is the days on the market, and the comparable sales. And don't just look at them you know, for a few minutes and say, oh, yeah, I'm good. I've got comparable sales. Because I can tell you, and I don't know where you guys are getting your comps from, but comps can be a little bit. Uh, misleading and a little bit tricky and you got to give it more than just uh, a few minutes overview and that's kind of what I did with this I, I gave it a rough little overview um, from actually from uh, a realtor who brought me the deal a real realtor slash wholesaler I should say and I briefly went over the deal I didn't dive too deep into them I was so anxious to get a flip under my belt and you know kind of make that quick cash that uh you know, I didn't dive into it as much as I, I should have. Now, am I saying I wouldn't have done this deal? No, this particular deal I still would have done, but it would have affected some of uh, my strategies in terms of the rehab and the pricing and marketing, et cetera, et cetera, which we will get to in the future. So I'm going to encourage you to carefully, carefully analyze your days on the market and your comparable sales, okay? Um, and, you know, as you're, you're digging into your comps and, and looking at the other properties, you, you really need to make sure that you're comparing apples to apples. And when you're determining these values and the sale prices and estimating the days on the market that you're going to have on your property. So, you know, there's a lot of some tricky neighborhoods, I'd say. We're doing a lot of, uh, a lot of investing and a lot of rehabs in, the, say, the Meyerland, uh, Bel Air areas of Houston and any market really depending on where you're at, every market's going to have a market, a sub-market, little niche markets within. So you just really need to make sure that you are um, uh, looking at analyzing the correct properties to your property that you're looking about uh, investing with. And and on that note, what your target, you kind of your laser beam focus needs to be on your deals is to uh, uh, to target houses and neighborhoods that do have a low uh, days uh, days on the market and a and a, really the, the sweet little sweet spots are those neighborhoods that are getting uh, low days on the market and not much inventory um, for sale. Those are really the markets that you want to look for and uh, you can hone in on those and look for deals in those, um, those areas and really find some sweet spots because I've been able to uh, find some neighborhoods where I've done multiple deals in and um, I've, you know, just kind of been able to farm those um, those areas that have uh, had success in the past. So you feel that much more confident going forward. So it's another key point there. You know, basically, in other words, I should say, you know, in, in other words, less competition is preferred. So looking for low days on the market, small percentage of uh, inventory homes for sale. Um, and the real big thing I guess I should have looked at on my first flip was the days on the market because, you know, the thing with that neighborhood, it was just above, I guess you'd say, a rental uh, property kind of neighborhood. It was more established and it was, um, there was a lot of um, uh, end user type uh, owner occupants in that neighborhood. But if you're looking at a neighborhood and it doesn't have uh, very good days on the market, and, you know, it's a lot of times it's not really going to matter how nice your house is because not that many people are going to see the house simply because it's located in that house, in that neighborhood that doesn't get many showings. And it's really as simple as that. So, you know, almost always it's going to translate into a longer hold time if it's a neighborhood where those numbers are showing longer hold time. So um, I'll say almost always because on occasion, you know, you can – uh, you can beat the odds, but I, you know I can tell you that you, in this business you're really not going to you're not going to make it very long if you're trying to defy the odds with your flips. You know you're better off, in my uh, in my humble opinion, um, going with the safe bet and sticking to neighborhoods that are getting uh, a good amount of traffic and have a lower uh, days on the market. So, you know, in kind of recapping, this uh, first mistake is look long and hard at the uh, days on the market and inventory. And 
you know, just a little side note, we're going to get into rehabs in a minute, but just make sure that you can uh, fix your house up pretty much as nice as anything that you're going to be competing with in that neighborhood and price it aggressively. So that is that was my first mistake in the rehab flipping business. So, you know, just uh, another thing is take into account the neighborhood and after pair value before finalizing the scope of work. And I say before, um, before you want to finalize that scope of work, and we're going to get into how important that's going to be. And uh, another little side note is you need to determine going in on the front end, not the back end, if you're going to maximize that price of that property or you're going to price it right in order to move it quickly. Now, kind of where I usually end up following myself personally is kind of what we call, you know, like a happy medium is um, somewhere in between, not totally maxing out the price and not being exactly the cheapest thing in the neighborhood, kind of somewhere in between is where most times you will find uh, that you want to be. Okay, so I mentioned um, just a second ago that uh, – uh, the scope of work, finalizing the scope of work is very important and uh, something that people don't always do. They kind of just say, okay, well, let's get started and uh, go into the deal. So 